I cannot believe this. I was out here in the garage working on, uh, well, back there you'll see I'm working on a video for doing the uh, chain oiler installation on the Himalayan. Uh, by the time you see this, you'll, you'll probably have already seen that chain oiler get installed back here on the bike. While I'm working on that video, UPS shows up and drops off the uh, hard panniers for the Himalayan, which is... I don't even know how it's possible because I just ordered it a few days ago from India. So I ordered it on eBay and it's already here. Crazy. And there's my woman. Looking all sporty with her rusted out bumper and her but her sunglasses and chewed up paint. It's beautiful. My woman drives manual. Oh, sweet. I am about to do the installation of the hard pannier racks on the Himalayan. So I just wanted to take a quick look before I dive into it at the hardware itself and the little manual that comes with the kit. And we'll take a little look at the panniers once I get them on the bike. If you haven't been around a Himalayan uh, with this stuff installed yet, the uh, the quality of everything's really good. It it perfectly matches the uh, well the quality of the frame on the Himalayan itself and the paint job and all that. So uh, that was a good thing to see. I ordered my set on eBay with uh, Royal Enfield King. I'll put a link down in the video description. Next, uh, let's take a look at the hardware that comes in the kit. Well, this isn't very much. This is gonna be a quick process. Got three sizes of bolts here. As I'm working along through this video, I'll just refer to these as long, medium, and short. Got some washer and then these wires are for um, moving the turn signal lights once you put the boxes on they get sort of covered up so you can move the lights if you choose to do so Just get that pillion seat off of there and get your battery disconnected and they want you to remove the uh, license plate hanger, which means you have to get up underneath. That's in the instructions, pretty easy. And they want you to disconnect the uh, license plate light and the turn signal light. So there's uh, wires underneath there. Just get those things disconnected. Get this plate hanger out of the way. You'll have three larger bolts. These are 10 millimeter and then uh, you need an Allen wrench for that, and what is it, maybe a, a five mil? Uh, four. Four millimeter Allen wrench for a couple of these socket cap bolts. And that's it. You can get this thing pulled out of here. Uh, once, you, once this drops out of the way, you'll have three wires to disconnect. So there you go. One, two, three, pretty easy. Next item on the list is the actual turn signals. So you need to uh, pull these out. So again, we've got our five mil Allen wrench. That one's kind of a tight fit, but should be fine. Uh, this is loose, by the way, because uh, the two of the bolts that hold the uh, turn signal hanger, they also go up through and they hold the fender up uh, ooh, kind of right below. There's a post down in there that it threads into. Right there, you can kind of see that up in there. Anyway, but uh, yeah, get the lights off next. Be careful when you pull the lights out. There's a bracket here that keeps them nice and sturdy, a metal bracket, so when you pull them out, that bracket wants to fall down, especially if you didn't have the, uh, the bolts up underneath in there, which I don't, but I think uh, I'm going to be getting them back in just focusing I just put a couple of the bolts back in there so that this can't drop down any further and then I'll continue on okay now we are on to the cool stuff they want you to pull out the bolts here and here 
and you're going to have to do that on both sides, but do yourself a favor and do one side at a time. And of course that bolt was so hard to get out because it's got the red Loctite on here, thread lock. And when you put your bolts back in, I highly recommend you do use thread lock. Um, you don't want these boxes, you know, the weight in the box rattling around and bolts are wanting to come out. So just make sure. All right, after you've got this bolt out and that one out, and then just take a look down here. This one never had a bolt in it to begin with, but uh, there is kind of paint in the threads because of that. So uh, when you go to put a bolt in here and get one of these sides of the cargo rack in place, get your bolt in there and thread it in without the cargo rack and just thread it back and forth and back and forth so you can cut into that paint. That way when you go to finally put it in, it'll be easier. This one down here requires a 45 millimeter bolt. It's one of the medium size bolts. There's only two of them there that are that medium size and they are used for down here. And what the instructions call for is to uh, get the rack in place and then first thread that bolt down there loosely so everything can kind of flex. So I'm going to do that. I'll get that bolt in with a washer. I'm trying to stress that with a washer because in the manual, they don't ever show any of the washers. And so you'll start putting things together and then later you realize you need to go back and use washers. All right, these two are in here loose. Now, uh, this one down here, it's a tad long. They're both the same length bolt. They're a 60 millimeter, but before it's done being threaded in, it starts to push against the fender and you'll see your fender start to push in a little bit. Now it doesn't push that much and underneath you can't see anything. I suppose somebody could just uh, go under and drill a little bit so the bolt isn't pushing on it. But unfortunately, you've got all this plastic covering things so you can't get there. Now on this side, it's different wherever that bolt's coming through up up in here somewhere you might be able to drill i don't know yeah i suppose so see can you see back in there see back in there that's where it threads through so the bolt starts to pull through and then it starts hitting this so um yeah you see what i did over here i had two washers but you could get away with one washer and let it push on the fender a little bit. It's not gonna be no noticeable after it's done, I just don't like it. So I may uh, let it tighten up, push on the fender a tiny bit, and get a shorter bolt in the future, like get a uh, 55 millimeter, something like that. Um, the 60s are definitely a little tad too long. Okay, so now you know, anyway, get them in there, get them loose, be prepared, that lower bolt is gonna hit your fender. Okay, so both sides are on. Both sides have the washers in place. Again, this side, this bolt is hitting the fender, but I'll live with it for a bit and get some shorter bolts if I feel like it's pushing too much. And the next thing is this cross member here goes on. And, uh, What's really nice is there's already some nuts welded in here. So that's pretty cool. We got the little bolts and washers right there to go in. So, I mean, this is almost already done. It's, it's really easy. In fact, I'm doing this in the morning right before I got to meet up with a bunch of guys to go ride at 10 a.m. I, I got a couple hours left to uh, get the boxes put on and then go for a ride. So this is not a big, uh, difficult task. Okay, so yeah, let me get this on and then the lights. So... Yeah, that's the step that we are at next. Super easy step, not a problem. Because everything's mounted loose, there's so much play, and even these have oval-shaped holes, so no one should have any issue with that. They're in kind of loose right now. Uh, because there is so much play, what the instructions say is to tighten these down to 10 Newton meters and then go and tighten the rest of all the rack bolts down to 22 newton meters. Uh, you can do the math, whatever, for the foot pounds for the US. Um, 
I, which I'm not even going to do. I'm just being honest. I'm going to do it by hand and crank the rack ones down tighter than these ones. And I've been doing nuts and bolts my whole life and never had a single one come out. So um, I'll do that. But what I think I'm actually going to do, because there is so much room for adjustment here, I am going to snug these down a little bit. In fact, let's just uh, do some of that. Starting with this bottom one. I'm just getting it to where at least it's sort of bottoming out, even though it's not tight. And that already means this doesn't want to wiggle, but I know it could still flex. And these still have a little bit of looseness. I can turn them by hand. See, so I think that's a little bit better. Get it slightly tight, then come back and tighten these. Same thing on this side. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, you're already kind of seeing what it looks like finished, but then we'll get the lights on. These, by the way, are 5 mil socket caps. So make sure you got your 5 millimeter Allen wrench. Um, and a lot of these threads, especially with like thread lock and everything, they go in pretty slow. You can't just kind of spin it, which is good. I mean, they're nice and tight. So all the fasteners have been tightened down. This thing is rock solid. <laughs> you heard me causing a little shake there. That fender's still not tightened up underneath. Um, let's take a look here. So I was looking at... For anybody else that watched my uh, video on mounting the chain oiler, I do have space here, and this doesn't vibrate enough. It's not gonna hit anything. I've got uh, oh three millimeters or so, and even if I if I needed to, I could kind of move this back a little bit. It it's absolutely fine. And there's my adjustment knob there. So if you are interested in this, uh, if you've been kind of noticing it. Um, I installed this a couple of videos ago, so check back some of my earlier videos and you can check it out. That is an automatic chain oiler. It just feeds oil back to the uh, sprocket while you ride. Next, they want you to get the light uh, mounted and you're going to run the wire through here. Okay, and get the light mounted and the wiring... Uh, and they provide the, the little extensions. The wiring is going to go up right underneath the fender. You can kind of see there's all this space right here, so you shouldn't have a problem. So you run your wiring and all that before you put the license plate hanger back in place. Um, the uh, If you're at the back of the bike, the right-hand side this is, excuse me, is the green one. And the left-hand side is... The red one. And don't forget, you have these from the original light. That's what you need to use. There are no nuts on the back side of this bracket. Unlike these that had nuts, there's nothing here. You got to reuse your nuts and bolts. Okay, this is how they want it done. I don't know how I feel about this. Not too sure. I don't really like seeing them here, but it's one of those things where once it's there and done, that's just how it is, and you're not really going to pay any attention to it, but they're there, and then you can see them with the little spliced in uh, extensions here. One thing I did for myself was um, I got these connected, and then I twisted them around each other a couple times just to keep them together before finally plugging them in, and the only reason why I did that was that then when they come in... Here, they come together instead of one way over here and one way over there, or whatever, just keeps them kind of tidy to twist them together. And then I am at some of the final stages uh, getting this on, and then I may continue using this bracket, which at the moment is just set up there, kind of pressed tight with friction. I, I think I'm just going to leave it actually, just to help sturdy things up because once you pull. Put the bolts through to hold this on. They are bolted in down under here. So uh, that bracket's all fine by me. I'll just leave it in place. I don't really think it's absolutely necessary, but who knows? I may even want to use it in the future for some sort of custom hanger for uh, like a, I don't know, a tool box or anything could go here. So I'll just leave that in place. Hey, maybe we should test the lights. 
Sure, let's do that. Do they work when it's not running? Yeah, I never even checked that out actually. Cool, so yeah, that's good. I guess that's a good point. You should test this before you get done. You may find out that those connections are not connected well. And then what, you gotta take that whole hanger off again to fix that. So check your lights out, folks. That'll help you out. Don't forget to connect your license plate light. So do that and then get this bolted up. That's it, we are looking good. See those wires back there? You don't really, you know, you don't pay any attention to them. Shoot, you could wrap them with white and then you'd really not see them. So they're on and then uh, that's it. I mean, that's a successful completion of the project. What do you say we get these boxes put on? I'm gonna throw those things on. They're pretty easy. You, you basically do it by hand. Uh, I'll put those on and then that's it for me because I gotta load up and hit the road. I'm running out of time. So take a look in here in the box. And you know, the box, I've seen a lot of videos online with the boxes. I haven't seen a lot of videos where they go step by step with the rack, um, but uh, pretty easy. You have these portions here at the bottom. They are fixed in place, but these can be rotated. So you need to loosen these up. These are kind of a little like lot well protective nuts so the bolts not sticking out but it also sort of locks this wheel in place so loosen these things up see that pretty easy that's all you got to do and then you're going to set the bottom ones right on here get the box pressed tight and then you're going to flip up that other bar and then um, which way is it going to be crank it down on the inside i need two hands to do that well let's see maybe maybe i can almost get us there with one hand oh my gosh yeah because the boxes are so light okay let me turn this around a little bit and where are we at okay so they are you like my sandals um yeah they're there but i need to get them kind of press so i'll have to uh, loosen up those bolts it looks like just a tiny bit possibly so that i don't have to press so hard and then drop it into place and then all you need to do is rotate this up behind this bar and then cinch it down nice and tight and then snug this one up so let's take a look in a second yeah see these down here i backed them out just a little bit like one full turn or so it's not that much just enough to give a little slack and then now you see that they did pop back there uh, the problem was see the rivets there well the rivets were kind of hitting the bar which uh, makes it a, a tighter space to be able to slip everything over the rack so by loosening it up anyway to alleviate it a little bit of space if you push hard enough you might be able to pop it on but then the rivets are going to scratch the paint on your rack so your choice if you want to sort of damage something and push it on hard or just loosen them up now that it's on here i will uh tighten those down and then i will hand tighten these man i need some sort of victorious drum roll music I guess I could edit that into the video, huh? Behold. Hard paneers. So what do you guys think if I get these things painted white? Not painted, but powder coated white. Any thoughts on that? Any comments? Curious. Uh, more than likely, I will do that. On my way north, I do pass a powder coating place on a regular basis so who knows maybe i'll just dip in one of these days and drop these things off uh they'll have to do a pretty good tape job to get around this or drill these rivets out powder coat it and then put new rivets in which i don't really want to do at all and that's just going to increase the cost so i don't know maybe there's something i can do myself um so yeah what do you think about doing white i'm curious we're all getting solid right now, and I've got one hour 
to get loaded up and eat some breakfast and meet up with my buddies to ride north to Telkeetna, Alaska, which I've already done, and I did that flight trip. If this helped you out, of course, please like the video and consider subscribing because now that I've got these on, I can really uh, undertake some big adventures in Alaska and I promise I'll get some more spectacular scenery and probably some wildlife. So consider subscribing and you could always click the little bell notification icon. That's it, everybody. I'm pretty psyched. As always, take care, be safe, and enjoy the ride.